We are on the road. Sweet. What's up, Tim? How's it going, man? Oh, I'm, I feel like I'm dying a little bit, but I think I'll be okay. <laughs> Dude, I am dying, literally. There's so much uh, frost on my windows, and I didn't even notice. On my side windows, I didn't even notice until I uh, started driving. And I don't feel like pulling over to scrape them off. So I have to have my windows open right now, and I'm very cold. So, when you die of your car accident slash pneumonia, I'm going to die from, I don't know what happened, dude. I don't know if I, like, if it's the shake that I drank or the, the burger that I ate, but, oh my god, dude, I feel like I'm going to die. I can't see through through my side mirrors, but at least I can see in front of me and behind me. (laughs) That's all that matters, right, Tim? Turn your defrost on. It is on, but, like, my windows are still, like, frozen on the outside. Oh, my God, you're going to (laughs) die. Who cares, anyways? Uh, Well, tonight's topic isn't about frosted windows. (laughs) Uh, Tonight, me and Tim are going to discuss... the last three issues of Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, so 298, 299, and the fantastic issue that was 300. Uh, Tim, why don't you catch me up on uh, what happened before 298, because I only read 298, 299, and 300, so why don't you catch me up on what happened before with uh, uh, Teresa and all that. 297 <laughs> was the first uh, one that went back into the legacy printing. Um, yeah. And two, and uh, so in uh, number six, uh, Jameson and uh, Spider Man are having a, a interview together, like a, like it's like it's a, it's a sit down exclusive. It's really cool. And uh, at the end of that issue, um, Peter, uh, uh Spider Man unmasks himself to Jameson. and then like, he's like, and Jameson like freaks out. He's like, holy shit! And then they start becoming buddies. And, uh, yeah, I, I knew that happened. I had seen that online. Uh, do, uh, do you want to tell us why you did that? Um, there's, uh, I don't know when this exactly happened, but Jameson at one point got married to, uh, or, oh, or, yeah, I know that. or Jameson's dad or whatever gets married to Aunt May. So, um, uh, uh, Peter's start, starting to look at Jameson as more like a family member instead of, like, this dude that's always hated him or whatever now, and, then, like, his former boss and all this shit. So, um, he's all like, dude, no, dude, like, he, like, you're, you've been wrong about Spider-Man, like, this whole time. And, uh, and, uh, 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 he, he just, um, it's, it, it was really good, um, like, cause, uh, Jameson is, like, falling off the deep end, like, he's, he's been drinking, like, all his, uh, uh, his only source of income is from his blog that he does, like, cause he got, f- uh, fired from the oh, Daily yeah. Bugle, um, so, like, he's, like, just really just falling off the deep end, and then Spider-Man just, like, feels for him, and he's just like, dude, man, like, like, we, we, we're in this together, man, like, this the shit's, the, like, the shit that's happening, dude, it's more than just... Spider-Man and Jameson do like we gotta like put this shit aside. We can we can fight this shit together, cause there there at there's all this stuff going on with uh, uh the Tinkerer and Mason, and uh, there's all sorts of this other stuff going on there. And and Spider-Man agrees to have this sit down interview with Jameson, and dur- and during that they're just fucking they're taking shots at each other. They're they're fucking not holding anything back with words. And, uh, and eventually just gets crazy, and Peter Parker's just like, no, dude, like, I'm Spider-Man. And, uh, and now they're helping each other out. And, uh, in, in 297, um, uh, Spider-Man's on the run with some people, and, uh, Jameson actually, like, helps him escape at one point to, uh, like, he's like, get in my van, you know, they're fucking, they're on the run, they're in the high-speed chase and shit, dude, it, it, I was like, whoa, dude, this is, like, really crazy, I never expected to see this in a Spider-Man book. <laughs> yeah, uh, oops, oh, well, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, that's the thing about, uh, Chip Zdarsky is, uh, I think he, uh, I don't know, dude, he got right with Jesus or something, because I hear, I, I hear his first, like, five issues of Spectacular, I hear they were utter garbage, uh, but that's just what I've heard from the majority of people. I haven't read it to form my own opinion. Like I said, I just read these last three. But uh, but he he started uh, listening to the fans. Is what I think happened. 
Oh, man, I totally agree. And uh, <coughs> I haven't read a lot of Amazing Spider-Man, but um, as soon as I picked up number one of this, like, it's kept me, it's kept me interested. It's kept me glued. And, uh, and, uh, there, and, I mean, I'm also an easy sell, but, uh, and, and it's Spider-Man. Spider-Man's been one of my favorites for a long time. And, uh, and then, but, but then there's other comic books where I've been, that I've enjoyed, and then I haven't been fully invested in keeping up with them. Like, Ben Riley, Scarlet Spider, I want to keep up with it, but it, it's, it wasn't, uh, uh. I don't know, it just wasn't around enough, or uh, at, my, at least at my store, it's not around enough to where I want to get it, but and but then this one I pick up every month, I make sure I'm at the store every month to get it, uh, yesterday I went as soon as the store opened, and there was only two, there was only four copies left of number 300, and they were both variants, so I picked up those four copies, and I'm like, it's <laughs> just... <laughs> Yeah, I know. Like, it, it, it was totally weird. I can grab you a regular one on, on Wednesday. I'm not going to be up there till Wednesday. Sweet, that'd be uh, cool. But, but uh, now, what's all this with uh, Teresa now? I, I got to know more about her now. I got to know her backstory. Then we can get more into the whole point of this episode, which was to discuss uh, the last three issues, because lots of cool stuff went down. See, as for Teresa, I had to... Uh, I had to inquire to our uh, local, to not our local, but our, uh, our, our uh, to Shannon, because he's a Spider-Man expert. I was like, what's this about Teresa? And she came in a, a graphic novel. They mention it a lot in the, in the older spectaculars. I can look it up here real quick. Uh, fuck, where is it? Yeah, because I don't know much about her, but she was a very cool character. She's awesome. She's a really cool character. Um, she is a uh, she works for some sort of a shield division or something like that, and she's been implanted with uh, uh for for this story anyway. She's been implanted with uh, uh information that's in her bloodstream, information on every superhero, their powers, their weaknesses, their battle strategies, and all the, all this shit. She has this uh. She has all this data in her bloodstream, and uh, and that, and that's why everybody is after her because they they they're trying to get the information from her. And, uh, I knew that part. Huh? I said, yeah, I knew that part, but they explained that part pretty good in the last three. Yeah. So uh, what the fuck is it? It's in the second issue. I have too many variants for number one. All right. Project Twilight is the name of the experiment, or is the name of the, uh, what's going on with her. And, uh, I've never heard of that. Okay, where is it? What's it called? Amazing Spider-Man Family Business. It's original original graphic novel. And that's where she first appeared as that's where she first appeared as Peter Parker's sister, but she wasn't really his sister. Um, though it was, I, they they mention it a lot throughout the story. And if you read the uh, in the back of each book, there's a uh, like a Q and A sort of thing that goes on, and then there's a lot of info from that in like the first five or so uh, books. I don't read the Q and A anymore, but I did on the. Huh? You said she's not his sister. You said she's not his sister. No, but she was uh, at, at, in that book. She was uh, uh, she was a spy, or she still is a spy technically, and she was spying on the Parker family, and she was had to be his sister or whatever, and they did. I I I'd never read the book, so I don't know what exactly it happened in it. But the, in the, you look through the Q and A. They'll, they they talk about some of it, and as long as she's not a clone, am I right? No, she's not a clone. Um, she's not his. I real know, si I know. I'm just yeah, she's like the clone 
saga. She's not a clone. She's not his real sister. But, like, I guess in that book, they bonded or whatever so much to where, like, they have, they, they kind of feel like they are brother and sister or whatever. Especially with all the crazy shit that happens in Spider-Man's life, you know? It's all like, well, yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Uh... Okay, so now getting into uh, 298, 299, and 300, I gotta say, uh, 298, uh, I was a little underwhelmed, just a slight bit, it wasn't a bad issue, I'd say 298 was just average, but at 299 it really started to pick up, and 300 uh, was one of the, that's, that's probably gonna be the best or second best issue of the year, with the other one being, uh, Marvel 2-in-1, number 2, also written by Chip Zdarsky. He's putting out of the top tire, top tire books. Uh, uh, I would have to say, surprisingly, my favorite part about all of this, uh, all three of those issues I read, my favorite part was how well he takes characters that are annoying and he'll make them be very likable. Uh, like we talked about Riri, Riri Williams before. Yeah, Riri, Riri Williams. Riri's awesome. Uh, She's awesome in 300. And, 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 uh, yeah, dude. <laughs> she was, uh, go on. Oh, uh, like, it, uh, every time they introduce her in one of these, uh, uh, Peter Parker Spectacular Spider-Man books, she's, like... She's like, like in the first time they show her, she's all like, "Get the fuck off my property, Spider Man!" I don't get, you know, I don't give a fuck. And then she's like beating his ass for no reason. And then, <laughs> and then uh, I think what they're trying to do, for like, like Bendis, Bendis, how he writes her in like the Iron Man books. I think he's trying to make her spunky, but he doesn't know how. She comes across as an idiot and a jerk, and and everyone treats her like she could do no wrong. Like she stole a bunch of uh, intellectual property from Tony Stark. Yeah. And then, uh, and then in the last uh, issue, uh, I was watching the review by uh, Doug Ernst, and he was saying, like, he was showing how in the last issue they were saying, uh, like, oh no, they were wrong for being mad at Riri for stealing, and they were essentially saying, like, stealing the uh, IP was pretty much a okay. And uh, I don't like that. Like, she was stealing. She should get in some type of trouble. It's like, like none of that was okay. Then they make her the biggest jerk, and, and uh, I don't know what's up with Bendis. Like, usually he's, he's an okay writer, but uh, uh, Chip Zdarsky, he writes her like she's a normal person, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it is she normally isn't a normal person in the other books. Because, like we were saying, so many, so many of these editors and writers at Marvel, uh, and and a lot at Image too, they're they're all looking at these characters and they just look at surface level like they're like like she's black so they gotta treat her special you know like they can't do anything wrong to her or else they'll think they'll be accused of being racist but right so they don't write her as a person they write her just like a thing but then chip sees her as a person so chip zadarsky writes her uh as a normal person tries to make her act and seem like a hero and that was the best thing for me was seeing how quickly he could turn her around. Oh yeah, like at the uh, in that one scene in uh in in uh, number three hundred, when he's all like, uh, when he's all like, man, I would tell you to run and hide, but uh uh, you, you have that look in your eye, the same look that I had when I was your age or whatever. Like you're you're a hero, or whatever. That's what really spoke to me. And then and then she's looking out to him swinging away. Or whatever, she's all like, oh man, dude, Spider-Man just acknowledged that I'm a hero, dude, that's pretty badass, you know, like, uh, like yeah. you, you could tell she has that look in her eye, all like, hell yeah, dude, that's fucking cool, Spider-Man acknowledged my existence, you know, like, like, as much hate that Spider-Man gets, like, not in the, uh, in the real world, because everybody loves Spider-Man in the real world, but, like, in the, yeah. how much hate he gets in his world, you know, like, a, a lot of the heroes recognize him as the fucking OG fucking like dude that's been around since the beginning of time you know like, the, like so yeah. so when you have the new cats coming in trying to fucking get their name like the new heroes whatever like riri and uh all yeah. these other people they're like oh man dude yeah spider-man fuck he, he thanks dude <laughs> you know like yeah uh um uh, well yeah That was pretty cool, and uh, Doom is one of my favorite 
favorite villains of all time. It's uh, the same my favorite years. villains are, are are pretty much uh, most of the Marvel villains, like uh, like Venom and Doom and Magneto. I think Magneto is probably my favorite, uh, but Doom is really up there. Uh, I, I really like his scenes, especially with with the time travel uh, bit that they're doing. I cannot wait to see how that plays out, and I'm curious if. Uh, the whole time travel part in that, I wonder if that's going to play into ASM at all. That's what I'm saying, because I, 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 don't, I don't read any I don't, ASM right now, but I have no idea how uh, uh, ASM and Spider... I know Spider-Man is Miles Morales, but uh, I don't know how uh, uh, the, the ASM and the Peter Parker stories intertwine at all, if they do at all, if they're like kind of like well, a... They're not. They're, if, if they're like a separate uh, universe, or I don't. Well, I I think it's the same universe, uh, but but uh, I I'm kind of unsure how they're gonna tie in in this aspect. If they're gonna tie in, like I don't know if they're ever gonna address it, or if they're acting like it's two separate universes, even though they're both the same universe. Right. I know the revealing to Jonah that he's a Spider-Man thing. Uh, carried over to Amazing Spider-Man. Like there was, there was like one line of that. I think it was in the annual. They acknowledged it, so uh, that is canon. So it is the same universe. But I mean, but that but also story, that also happened back. Right that kind of happened back in Civil War, the first one, the good one, when uh uh Peter Parker went live on camera and then unmasked himself or whatever, and then jo J Jonah fucking threw a fit. Like ah, oh, that kid was like a son to me. And he's fucking, and he's he's still in the Daily Bugle then, and he's fucking yelling at Robbie. <laughs> and it, it, was, it was a good scene, because uh, I, I read it, I read it in like three different uh, 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 perspectives, because I read it in the Civil War book, I read it in the uh, Peter Parker Civil War book, and I read it in the Spider-Man Civil War book, where they, they showed like the same scene, but in whole different perspectives. So it was pretty cool to see it like that. And then, uh, but then something happened, uh, uh, in between, like, now and, uh, Civil War to where, like, a lot of people lost their memories of shit that happened during Civil War. Yeah, I think that was because of the One More Day, uh, uh, storyline. I forgot who wrote and drew it. It's a big deal. Like, it's, like, right on the tip of my tongue. I, I'm drawing a blank, but it was one more day. Uh, he basically made a deal with the devil that everybody would forget. But right. then there was the uh, the catch was uh, was Mary Jane is out his life. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think Mary Jane is coming back now. I read about that in the uh, uh, Q&A, I think, on the back of the Spectacular books. And I think I read something about that where... Uh, and we're like a lot of the fans are happy to see like a more bachelor uh, uh, Peter, and uh, I, even though like like everybody loves Mary Jane and they love Gwen Stacy, people love Gwen Stacy too much these days. And uh, I love Felicia Hardy, like she's one of my favorites uh, from all his girls. It's it's Felicia and Gwen for me uh, did, out of his girls. Did you like that little uh, snippet in the back of Three Hundred with Felicia? I I did. Uh, I, I'd say it was just all right though. Like it wasn't anything that good though. But I liked seeing her show up. It, I it's think, been a while since she showed up. It looked like it was just Chip and uh, 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 Cooper just having fun. Like they were just having a good time and playing yeah, a little they, short and whatever at the end of the book. I think they were giving a little nod in one scene where where she says like, "Will you marry me?" or whatever. They were giving a little lot, uh, nod to uh, Batman Annual 2. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, with, uh, with the Catwoman thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, with Catwoman. Yeah, they were giving a little nod to that. I didn't even talk about it on Twitter. That didn't even click to me until, until I read that on Twitter. Yeah, that makes sense. I, I thought that whole scene was, like, just taking shots at DC because, like, at the, at the, at the title it Canary. And I was like, what the fuck are they doing? But then the name of the diamond was the canary or whatever. So then I was like, okay. <laughs> but yeah. when I was reading that, I was um, like, are they just taking shots at DC right now? Because I know they like to do that sometimes. So. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm mostly curious uh, how, how the uh, whole time travel thing is going to come into play. Oh, yeah, uh, for so sure. For those, of you, for those of you listening... Uh, Peter decided uh, to go back in time, uh, so he asked Doom if he still had his time machine. Doom said yes, they go. Uh, so it's Doom, the Torch, Spider-Man, and uh, 
uh, Teresa are there, and uh, Spider-Man's about to go back in time, and then basically everything hits every fan. <laughs> like, there was not a fan that was not hit. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, uh, this, uh, what were they called again? The things that uh, start to attack? The, um... Uh, v- I think, uh, v- Vedum. Vedum. Or, what was it? Vedum. Like Venom, but Vedum. with a D. Oh, yeah. No, I think it was like an I at that. I think it was like. Mm-hmm. I forget. There. Was it Vedum? Vedum. Something like that. I swear, it, uh, I swear it's Vedum. I'm opening up 300 right now. I liked how they had every single cover for uh, uh oh, me too. for a spectacular Spider-Man, and they're like 300 issues. Like technically, there's more than 300 issues, but <laughs> yeah, but uh, uh was it beat up or something like that? Yeah, the beat up, and then uh, while you're looking for that, I'm just gonna film all in the beat attack and uh. So, yeah. Doom, you know, he sends Peter back, and then Peter and Teresa go back. Oh, yeah, there is an eye at the uh, end. It's Vidomi or something. Doom and the Torch had to go away. Yeah, Vidomi, yeah. Uh, the Vidomi attack. And so, uh, Peter and his sister end up getting sent back uh, a few weeks. But Doom and the Torch had to go because uh, the place was going down. It was going to explode. So, uh, Peter got sent back successfully, but then... Doom says something very eerie at the end where he said they're gonna they're they're not quite sure what's gonna happen next. Uh in in my opinion, I think uh it's kinda silly for Doom to worry about because if Doom had his time machine then, then Doom had his time machine weeks ago. So yeah. theoretically I think Doom of the past could send them back to the present. So I wouldn't really worry about it. Uh but it is kind of interesting to see what's actually going to happen. I'm going to have to pick up the next issue. Well, Doom's a super genius, so uh, uh, he's going to, uh, he probably knows, like, because he, he's one who put in all the codes and whatever for what time they're going to and everything, so yeah. there might have been something going on in, with whatever uh, uh, Doom was doing in that area at the time. Like, So, like, he's going to, so Spider-Man, Teresa, and Jameson are going to show up in Doom's fucking fortress or whatever, out of nowhere, he's gonna be like, and so he might auto, they might automatically just start getting attacked by Doom bots and all sorts of other shit. So it's all like, oh man, they got other shit to worry about because my security system. It could just be something small like that, you know, like where it couldn't, yeah. be, it, it might not be something so catastrophic, but you never know because <laughs> this this book has been hit, it hits with a lot of cool twists. And and none of it seems like it's forced at all. It all just seems like, whoa, just like, man, what the fuck? It, it seems like one of the best, most natural, most classic books I've ever seen uh, in, in uh, modern day. Because, uh, cause, I mean, lately it hasn't been a merit-based uh, uh, type of industry. And people like to think they're growing the industry, but what I see a lot of people point out is, uh, in the 90s and before, when it was uh, industry based off talent, you saw hundreds of thousands to millions of copies sold. And now they think that being prog- uh, progressive is going to bring in readers, but it doesn't. Uh, it's really shrinking the industry to where you have Amazing Spider Man flagship title selling 40,000 copies when it should be selling 350,000 at the very, very least. Amazing Spider Man, uh, I think it would, it's a shame. Ever dips to under three hundred thousand, and uh, that's a lot of things that just happen happening lately. Where um, uh, uh, Superman, Batman, and Spider Man were like the top three uh, heroes for a while, but and like the top three selling for merchandise, comic books, whatever, clothes, and everything. And now you have uh, uh, uh I know I talk about this a lot. Now you have One Piece that's slowly pushing up its ranks in sales and stuff and it's it's i it's like i'm pretty sure that if it's not tied with spider-man overall sales like throughout existence 
that it that, that it's pretty close, and it, at the rate that it's going, it's gonna end up pushing up past Spider Man, Batman, Superman, and shit. But uh, and and that's something that like as much as I love One Piece, that's something that we got to stop from happening. That's something that like we need to we need to keep our number one, number two, number three spots. Personally, personally, I like I'd like to see Spider Man go up to number one, but it's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen because like when I'm at the comic book store yesterday, I saw like seven different Batman titles. Oh yeah, there's there's so many, but uh, and not uh, not including not including Batwoman, uh, Gotham City Garage, uh, um, Harley and Ivy shit, like not including that type of shit, dude. They're just just Batman titles oh, alone, dude. Like. Oh, no, that's not- Batman up, up to number one if we're talking just comic sales. Yeah. Because when you have a seven Batman title, the Batman fans are going to pick up uh, one or two or three, maybe four or five if you're one of the bigger Batman fans. And maybe somebody out there is getting all seven. Yeah. But all that does is fans can only buy a couple of each one, but if you had it to one or two, then fans could buy both and the numbers would shoot up. Uh... Uh, but for Spider-Man, uh, man, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second. <laughs> I'm talking about sales. I'm tired. I spent 13 hours at college. I forgot what my point even was with this. Uh, but uh, there's something, oh, there's something. I, I got it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Sorry, I got it. Uh, but like I was saying, uh, a minute before that with the whole 90s thing, uh, how it was based off merit, I feel, uh, uh, this book is based off Barrett. Chips the Dark the Darsky's a great writer. Adam Cooper, uh, he did the art. He's a fan, he's a phenomenal artist, and uh, I feel this book needs a lot more eyeballs on it. Uh, and this book could easily be the top seller for Marvel uh, month after month. It gives me a very nineties feel, like a very like a book that's just full of the top talent. That's the feel it gives me, like. Uh, like Spider-Man in the uh, late 80s, uh, early 90s, when you have Dave Michelini, I think his name is, something like that, it's a weird name. Yeah. When you had him, you had uh, Tom McFarlane drawing it, that was a very merit-based book. Uh, they brought us Venom, they brought us so many good stories in their run. Uh, that's that's some of the best. Hello? Spider-Man, they- yeah, you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that book, uh, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, it's not giving me, like, a McFarlane feel, but it's giving me, like, a top talent uh, feel. Uh, so it's it's reminding me of 90s talent, which is some of the best talent we've seen in comics. Number six, uh, Kubert <laughs> takes a break on the art, and we have Walsh instead. So, and uh, it doesn't pull away from the story doesn't feel any different at all you can tell the art's totally different and uh uh art art made a difference for me in marvel 2 and 1 number 3 uh jim chung did the art for 1 and 2 and he did the cover for number 3 but he didn't do the interiors on number 3 and the other artists they had i don't think his his tone uh or his style fit the tone of the book I just bring that up because it's another Zdarsky book. Right on. Uh, I was going to say something. Oh, man. Uh, I'm kind of getting, I'm kind of slightly upset that this book is starting to get more popular because I'm, I was starting to, I was picking it up since the beginning, since number one. And, uh, and I, it, it I, know, was, I like when it gets more popular. No, but now, now it sells out at my comic book store and I have to fucking get there right away to get my copy. Uh, but before it wasn't selling out, and I, and I could get them. I could get them like, like I didn't have to get them the week or the day they came out. I could I could wait a week. So I, the, I could even wait a whole month, like if I didn't have the money right away to buy what I needed or buy what I wanted. So like I could, but now now I can't at all. I have to. Get, <laughs> it's 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 getting I popular. <laughs> I think it's just your shop. I don't think it's the popularity. It's just your shop because I've been there one time. And- they only have like two issues of every title, even that Wednesday's title. There were only like two or three copies. I think they make more money probably off like their games, their board games, and like Magic: The Gathering and those those kind of games. I 
think they make more money off that than they do their comic. But there's there's stuff <laughs> that gets there. I remember one week I went there to buy my uh, uh, spectaculars and they were out. And I was all like, dude, where'd your spectaculars go? Like, you never sell out. And then he went, oh, we only got half our shipment in. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> so, uh, it, it, it's, I don't know, the shop, it, it, it could have been a day when I went in yesterday, they didn't get their whole shipment in, too, and all I got was the variants. And uh, so it could, that could have been a thing. But you know, I've seen it a lot of times, like, when the new book comes in. And uh, they they'll have, like, They'll have like three shelves, of fucking full of it, whatever. Not like the whole entire shelf, but you know how they stack them. And uh, they'll have like three. It'll be like three shelves full, and it'll be like filled up, you know. And I'll be like, all right, cool. And then you go back like, the next day, and like they'll have one shelf or whatever. Or, you know, it's. I think it just depends on the book or whatever. I think this one is starting to get popular. And it could also be my shot, but I really, really think that this one's starting to get popular. Like people start talking about it, and it's been getting that fanfare. All right. So, uh, so now I gotta ask. Uh, I said my favorite part was uh, how he wrote Riri Williams. Uh, he wrote her like a normal person, uh, and made her a very good character in this issue. And if that's how it's cured in, in all the other titles, I would probably be reading her all the time. Uh, so now I gotta ask, what was your favorite part of the last three issues? Um, well, 298, 299 sort of did, like, just a really cool build-up for 300, and I think they did it master masterfully. Um, I liked in, uh, 300, when, it's, it's in the very beginning, and when, uh, he's like, well, uh, Peter Parker, Spider-Man's like, well, I'm about to die, I'm being crushed by this robot. And then Hawkeye and oh, yeah. uh, Hawkeye, Black Panther, and everybody comes out of nowhere. Fucking like Hawkeye's like, dude, my fucking, I don't need my high tech arrows to fucking be a badass. And and then you got Black Panther. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Black Panther comes out and he's fucking kicking it. Like he's like, I know how to take down the machine and whatever. And so then they're overcoming all their fucking tech obstacles. And then they're just they're just using their the. Uh, the the trained badassery to fucking take the to take on the day, and that, and then that's when Riri's all like, Riri and Spider Man have their little talk or whatever when, when they uh, after she almost gets crushed by the fucking uh, uh, I forget what villain that is Whiplash fucking whoa about, <laughs> she's about to get crushed by Whiplash so then he comes in saves her or whatever and then she's all like I got a little piece of tech that I can still use and her phone turns into the fucking thing that, ha like, that Iron Man did in a, a Civil yeah, War. Like a hand thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> She's like, I can still use this. Yeah. Or whatever. So, like, yeah, I, I really it was just, did like this, both parts. And it was just cool, dude. Like, it's, like, everybody, like, Spider-Man is, like, a fugitive at this point. But then everybody's starting to figure out the truth of what's really going on. So they're like, oh, no, we gotta actually help Spider-Man. Like, he's, like, was on the right side of all of this the whole time. <laughs> yeah, I really... I really, that scene might be a little underrated when they all, uh, because the whole point of the story was that the villain has figured out how to, uh, stop all the tech from the heroes, so, uh, that, that was a really cool scene when they did pop in without their tech, and they were, they were going crazy, uh, they were fighting real well even without the tech, especially, I like that scene with Black Panther when he's like, I don't need this suit, I am the Black Panther, yeah. uh, paraphrasing but he said something like that and I was that is a very cool scene. Uh what did you think of all the stuff with the tinkerer? I thought that that was really cool. I'm surprised I didn't see it coming. I was too, and I was mad. I was all like, "No!" because I really liked the tinkerer, especially when they had him uh, uh kicking it with uh, Aunt May. And shit like that, yeah. and like when, like when they're all like, and he's like cooking the meals and all. Like I don't know if you saw any of that yeah. stuff. That was, yeah, yeah, yeah. I saw that part. That one was really funny. When, uh, he's, cooking the meals. he's cooking, he's cooking the meals, and he's doing all this stuff. He's just being like a regular dude, and like so, you're like you. They make it so you you won't see it coming at all. You're like, okay, the Mason is make Mason's our friend. But then when you find out that the Tinkerer like is inside of his body the whole time, I was like, what the fuck. And I, 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 didn't, 
I didn't know the Tinkerer was so small at first either, because I, I haven't really been into comic books lately, and, and when I was into him when I was younger, Tinkerer, I didn't know anything about him. Uh, he might have, I don't even know if he was really around. He probably was, because um, I know he makes, like, all the stuff. They've, they've shown him in the uh, in the Daredevil show, but he wasn't this, this, this little tiny squirrely guy. You know, he's... He, 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 Well, I stopped reading one time in the mid '90s, and then I picked up all those books in uh, 2001, and I started reading those again. And I I was reading for like maybe a couple of years, and every once in a while I'd pick up a new Hellblazer here and there because I I really liked John Constantine Hellblazer. And I'd pick up a new Hellblazer here and there, and then uh, that series eventually ended. I never picked up the last one, and then uh. Roughly from when, like, like, 03 ish to like recently? I probably stopped, yeah, to like 03 to about recently, so like, uh, yeah, and then, and then I've been just, and then recently I've just been picking up more indie books than I pick up Spider Man, I pick up Spectacular Spider Man, but then I pick up weird shit like Rocco's Modern Life, and uh, yeah, pick it up is where it's at. <laughs> and, yeah, I pick up other, I just pick up weird, obscure stuff because. I feel like that shit needs more love anyways, and they're usually way better stories. They are, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I like to do. But, uh, but yeah, reading in, in the 90s, I mean, you, you read most of, uh, I, was, I, I wouldn't say most, but I'd say you read a lot of uh, some of the best Marvel stuff, uh, at least art-wise. I know sometimes the, the 90s stories can be just a little bit lackluster, but I, the art was some of the best. Uh, uh, how do you feel about uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, uh, the good stuff Chip Zdarsky's given us? How do you feel about that compared to that 90s stuff you read? Man, uh, all I can really remember from Spider-Man and other stuff in the 90s was, uh, uh, I remember reading Separation Anxiety, and and I was I, I was a kid... And I, it, it blew me away, how, like, how fucking hard comic books were to read. Like, because, like, the, they use a lot of words I didn't understand. They use a lot of bigger words and shit. And I was all like, dude, what the, this is supposed to be for kids, isn't it? <laughs> like, I don't understand a lot of these words. I'm, I'm not that smart. <laughs> and so that was something. It was, it, it, was, it was, sometimes it was hard to get through. But with Spider-Man, it, it was always still fun to read. And... And there was a video game that came, uh, that ha was for Super Nintendo that was a separation anxiety. You got to play with Spider Man and Venom. It was a beat 'em up. It was cool. Um, uh, but I don't, I don't, I can't really say like how I felt when I was reading those books back then in the '90s. You know, I was a kid, and my memory doesn't just it doesn't go back that far. Like at least with those types of memories. Yeah, I understand. And like most of the information I got from comic books and stuff was from the back of the uh, 94, 95 uh, uh, Flare and Fleer cards, because in the back, like on the back of the cards, they'd always have like, uh, uh, it'd have their first appearance, it'd have like all their stats, uh, it'd have like their height, their weight, it'd, it'd have like uh, uh, a, a whole like paragraph of information on them, all on the back of a freaking uh, playing, like the size of a playing card or whatever. It'd have all this cool shit on there, and the art. The art for the cards was amazing, dude. Fucking, uh, look them up. I have one card. Okay, I was gonna say, I look have, uh, <laughs> uh, wait, were you done? No, nah, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I have, uh, I have a copy of, uh, X-Force number one, still in the poly bag. Uh, in, in the back, it has, uh, one of the cards for Deadpool, actually. That's nice. kind of cool. Light build art. I, I, his art's actually grown on me. Like, like I understand he had that that drawing of caps that everybody wrote. And honestly, I wasn't like a big fan of his his art at first. But uh, I've been looking at uh, some of the new Youngblood stuff, and I know he doesn't draw the interiors on it usually, but he's been but he's been doing the covers. And his uh, if you look up the Liefeld covers for the recent Youngblood series. They're they're actually super cool. Like his art has actually grown on me. Like his art isn't necessarily that bad, and uh, a, lot really people, bad, but, a lot uh, of people a lot of people 
Go ahead. Go ahead. I was just going to say, there's just some things about it that didn't sit well with me. Like, like of course, that cap. Like, you always... <laughs> you see a meme of that cap every day, pretty much. Yeah, you see then, that everywhere. Uh, some, of the other, some of the other stuff, like how he avoids drawing backgrounds sometimes, avoids drawing feet, sometimes avoiding hands, I think. But, uh... uh I don't know, it's just petty stuff, you know, I started looking past the petty stuff, uh, and actually his art isn't bad when you stop being so petty, like, I think hating on my thoughts is just a cool thing to do, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know, it's just what everybody does. I mean, drawing... Uh, his art, like, I really appreciate it now. Drawing hands and feet is a lot harder than what it is, like, it's, there's, there are people wrote, written and done whole books on drawing hands and feet or whatever, like, just, like, a whole book on how to draw hands, like, like, you know, like, it's, it's not something that's easy to do, and if you can do, if you can, if, if there's something you can do in your fucking piece to get it done quicker and work around having to draw hands, then, yeah, do it, you know, like, if, it, if it's something you're not, if it's not your strongest suit, and you're, and, yeah. And then I've looked at I look at his stuff all the time. I'm like, dude, he's got hands and they fit, they work. They got Deadpool holding swords and guns and shit and he's you know, he, okay, he can, true. and you you can see all that. You can see all the detail in the hands or whatever and then like and a, a lot of people hate on the pouches or whatever, but he wasn't the only person putting pouches. Oh, I don't like the pouches. I like the pouches. He, he wasn't but, uh... He wasn't the only person putting pouches on. Like, everybody had pouches in the 90s, dude. Like that was, that was that was just the yeah, thing. That was the <laughs> but uh but here i am i'm parked so uh i guess we're off the road now all right man uh we'll see you next week <laughs>